We're going to connect with uh, Canada now after doing twice Greece. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Greece is big on war games. Greece <laughs> is big on war games. We're going to connect in Canada with uh, Rob Crandall uh, of uh, On Target uh, Simulations. There. Okay. Ah, no, here here we go. Yes. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. So nice to see you both today. Yeah, you too, it's Rob. Great. Yeah. It's great. Uh, um, well, first of all, uh, since last time uh, you, uh, we connected it, uh, to your office, uh, you get it tied up. Your, your background is much tidier than it was. <laughs> <laughs> I just spent the last 20 minutes decluttering, yes. Uh, so. I don't want how, everybody to know how uh, a real development office looks. <laughs> Rob, how are things uh, approaching uh, release, right? Yes, um, Southern Storm is, is just about ready to go out the door. So I'm just sitting here with my feet up on the desk, twiddling my thumbs because there's nothing to do. Uh, maybe somebody will report a bug, but who knows? Uh, so, yeah. yes, I've been busy. So the Rob, team has been very busy. Uh, Rob, the, 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 before we get into more details, um, just going back to, you know, for anyone who is not familiar with, with uh, Flashpoint campaigns and, this, and specifically Southern Storm, well, it's one of the most anticipated ga war games, uh, I would say, ever. Uh, in you know, considering the uh, amount of feedback we're getting from from the the fans, uh, set during Cold War and uh, nations, U.S. and Soviet Union, and more. So, can you tell us, um, you know, a more about a bit about you know who is involved and what are the factions and the nations and the joint and uh, and and what forces you control? You know, all the basics. The basics, sure. So this is a war game set in a hypothetical conflict between NATO and Warsaw Pact in 1989. Um, it's on. It's in West Germany, um, as it then was. The games run about four to 14 hours in time. The maps are about 15 by 20 kilometers in size, although some are bigger. You're commanding a, a reinforced battalion up to a reinforced regiment or brigade um, with counters, the ones you see on the map, typically platoons or for the Warsaw Pact uh, companies. And you maneuver around, the hexes are 500 meter hexes. And so it's a tactical game of up close, you know, highly lethal modern combat. It's as high intensity as it gets. Um, that's kind of the overview. The particular forces for Southern Storm, which we're looking at here, have um, eight nations. They're the four from the old game. So the US, the Soviet Union, West Germany, and the United Kingdom. And because we're in, in Bavaria now and in related areas, we um, add in Poland, Czechoslovakia, France, and Canada, because uh, they were involved down there. So we have eight nations. Um, unlike the last game, which came out nine years ago, almost exactly nine years ago, um, you could only have one nation per side. Now you can have multiple nations per side. And you as a commander show in it, and you have a nationality. Um, take it from there. Yeah. Uh, well, the game... How about how about the new the scenarios and campaigns and and you know what are the units that we'll we'll see we'll see in, in the game? Typically, platoons and companies, um, sometimes sections or individual flights of aircraft. Um, if you've seen the previous game, it's quite similar in scope. Um, everything about it has been deepened and improved, but the scope is pretty much the same. Um, a few things that are a little different this time around that are significant though is that we got away from magic engineers um, it used to be if you had to cross a river and there are a lot of rivers on these maps you drive a combat unit up to the, the river bank and you'd snap your fingers and half an hour later there'd be a bridge we had you know, the staff would provide a bridging element and get you across um, that was a little unrealistic because um, a lot of that fighting really would center on river crossings and the water crossings. And so we have dedicated on-map bridging engineers now. And big hint, they're worth their weight in gold. If you 
have four rivers to cross and you lose one of your engineers, <laughs> it's like you only have three now, uh, you, you're in a world of trouble. Um, apart from these dedicated engineers, we have um, what we call off-map locations because a lot of the artillery is quite long-ranged on both sides and you can't really place them on a, a 15 kilometer by 20 kilometer map realistically. So we say now, okay, we will put them in an off-map location. It's so many kilometers east and south, say, or north and west of, of where the center of the map is. And it then works out all the ranges. You can still do counter-battery fire and things like that, but you don't actually have to have them on the map to participate in the game. The, um, uh, the, the, the game is structured in, in, in campaigns and battles, right? And, and what the structure of you know how these battles are linked to each other and uh, and and there's you know there's large battles there's smaller um, you know skirmishes how are the missions linked to each other and and how is time managed um, you know to link these campaigns and battles yeah so that's a good question um, the game will ship with 22 standalone scenarios and three campaign games. And the campaign games are linked scenarios. Um, and so you play out the game, um, and it'd be four to eight hours, and um, you can end it up to a little early if you like. And that can matter because the way the games are scheduled in a campaign, you have travel time to the next map, which is a standard four hours. And then any extra time you have before that next scenario starts is used for rest and recovery. And so your units will um, fill in fallen out uh, vehicles and platforms, um, possibly absorb some new replacements and just recover a little rest of morale and a lot of ammo. And then the game starts. And you've moved your core force from the first game to the second game. And then you move them from the second to the third and the third to the fourth, as you might expect. But they get worn down. Um, like I said, this is a very lethal um, combat area. And you really need to spend a lot of time when you're playing campaign games not burning out your force. Um, replacements are few and far between, and you have a long time, like I'm three or four days of, uh, of uh, game time, to uh, make those things last. And creates all kinds of delicious command dilemmas because you really have to think, you know, do I do I really push and possibly have a Pyrrhic victory? Or do I just acquiesce and say, yeah, I didn't clean up in this scenario, but I kept my force in being. And I've got eight hours before the next one. And that's enough time for me to get up the strength and, and get back in, in the groove again. Um, so there's a, a real tension. And if you might end, for example, a campaign scenario couple hours early um, just so you can get that extra recovery time and you might not have seized every victory point location or really chased down every last enemy unit but your forces are that much better much better prepared for the next contest they're about to enter well, so. one one thing that uh, uh, we were, were chatting with with the team uh, and well, that is in, ev in continuous evolution is the combat system, you know, compared to, you know, the earlier Flashpoint campaigns, games, Flashpoint games, and, and uh, Flash since Flashpoint in Germany, and, and, and now yeah. what we have now, uh, almost to the point where, you know, Flashpoint campaigns is almost like the subtitle now, because it's, it's formed, morphed into something completely <laughs> different in a way, right? How, how did the combat um, system change over time, and, and you know, what you think you're, you know, you want to point out as the, the big, being the biggest changes if you've applied to the combat, combat system? We've made a host of changes. And almost everything that worked, we've taken apart and made it work better. I'm deepening the modeling. And we've had new team members since the Red Storm days that have really gone to town and helped. So the spotting model used to be kind of black and white. It was you're spotted or you're not. And we thought thermal imaging gear uh, was you know, the, the greatest thing ever. And, and that was the only modifier, really. Well, now we have a very detailed spotting model. And we have detection ranges and classification ranges and identification ranges. And we have different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that we're 
surveilling on and we're comparing different contacts and how good they are and really making a, a careful determination. Um, the direct fire model um, had a lot of um, overkill in it so that if you had five of your tanks shooting at five of theirs, all five of yours might shoot at the first tank they see and all kill the same one in essence. And that happens in real life, but there's a lot of control measures to prevent it. And so we did something similar to distribute fire better. And our indirect fire was completely rewritten. So you'll see instead of just a, a barrage hit, hit, hit a hex, you'll see um, individual volleys hacks every couple of minutes. And you now get to select the munition types in far more detail. Um, we have all kinds of different um, artillery and main tank gun uh, munition types. And for the artillery ones, you can say, I want this particular smoke, and then I want this particular HE, and then mix in some ICM, something like that, a little later on, and really fine tune it and have far more detail. That said, one of our goals was to keep it flowing the way the old game did, and we didn't want to slow it down or, or bog it down. And so you'll see it really proceed um, pretty much the same or in a very similar way to the Red Storm, um, just with more plausible looking results, shall we say, higher fidelity results. And That's a really for those good point, who found Rob, it, that um, you can add this detail and you can add this complexity, but if you're not improving the user interface and the feedback and keeping the whole flow right, you might add all this content and features and actually make the game a less enjoyable experience. So it's really important to focus on those things. And I don't, sometimes people don't realize how much work goes into that side of it rather than just, oh, look, we've got this cool new feature. That is so true, Ian, because at the end of the day, we're trying to tell a story and we can get in our own way by putting in too much. Uh, and in fact, with this version, I put in a set of controls that let you turn off a lot of the, the combat stuff. Um, it, it, it happens, but it doesn't show it to you. And that's to help people who just want a quicker, more abstract experience and, and just get to the end. You know, I'll, I'll review it later and, and see where the losses were and who did what. Or other people who are doing something small, say, and really want to get all the detail and they want it to go slowly enough that they can see what's happening and you know, which of the weapons that seem to be doing the damage. Um, uh, so you can do that too. And before you couldn't customize it, now you can customize it extensively get the experience you want. Well, talk about this improvement and, you know, and, and uh, you know, making the game experience a b better uh, one. Uh, what do you think is, is the future of the Flashpoint series? I mean, it took you took you nine years to get to the point where you're releasing Southern Storm. What do you think is the future of the series now? Oh, we've done so much work improving the, the game engine. Uh, we really want to start doing a whole lot more content now. Um, so staying in the Cold War, this is the southern end of the entire central front of NATO. Clearly, we'll do a full to gap version and then a Northern Plains version. And with the Northern Plains, you know, we'll have uh, Poland and Britain and you know, Holland, Denmark in as well. So we'll have 12 nations, three games. Um, there'll be DLCs, but it's all one engine. We'd really like to go further north into Norway, and we're open to possibilities elsewhere as well for the Cold War engine. Um, beyond that, we're really interested in the modern era uh, for understandable reasons. And particularly things like drones. Drones changed everything, have changed everything. And so we really want to get modern equipment, modern force structures, uh, modern situations, and set all that up. Oh, here's something new. When you're doing scenarios, you can change the electronic warfare levels per side per hour now. In the old game, it was just, just set once and, and that's it. So now you can coordinate your forces with, uh, with the actual um, EW settings and air superiority that uh, higher HQs have set up for you. And something else we're looking at right here on these screens is a whole new part of the scenario editor where you can create what we call battle plans. And battle plans in some games would be scripts of telling the units what to do. But in this case, no, it's more a way to express the commander's intent. Um, 
if you imagine a group of officers before the battle starts having an orders group and they're huddled around the map and the, and the executive officer is sketching things out, it would look a bit like this. This is where they're agreeing, okay, you're going this way, we're going that way. Um, you're moving groups of units, not individual units. And you're expressing your intent as a commander. Um, but we all know what happens to plans when they meet the enemy. Um, and, and similarly, these will, will suffer a similar fate. But it gets you going. These plans are made and they're saved independently of the scenarios. So that means if you've got, say, a brief moment in time and you come up with a really good new Warsaw Pact battle plan, you can share it with your friends. You can, you can send it out, you can publish it, you can do all kinds of stuff and create like mini content. Um, not a full-blown scenario, but the, the, the smarts in them um, are severable and can be sent out. So we're really excited to see what people do with that. It's interesting because These are other know, shots we were talking about uh, about, uh, about uh, with Hubert about you know how a <laughs> game mother became uh, you know a contributor to the series with DLCs and such. You know, do you see that happening as well with Flashpoint campaigns where you, you actually ask for, for a contribution to the community, uh, you know, creating content and then you know sort of validating it and making it available to the public. Oh, yes, that's the most fun part. Um, everybody on the team that made this started in the Matrix forums. Um, and, and there were modders and contributors and they said, yeah, I want to be part of it. And the, uh, the rest is history. And very much, um, you might recall with Red Storm, we, the final edition we call the, the Player's Edition, yeah. just because it incorporated so many new ideas and features that were suggested in the forums. And, and, uh, it, it helps us also that the uh, the time period covered is one where people are still very much alive. If we were doing Napoleonics, not so much, but you know, <laughs> Cold War, <laughs> we got a lot of people telling us, yeah, no, it went this way instead, and uh, you might want to do it that way too. And That's cool. We've benefited enormously from that. We're just weeks away, right? So it's the week before Thanksgiving releasing. Yeah. So that means a gold master <laughs> is it next week or week after? <laughs> Don't be nervous. Don't. <laughs> well, I'm, I have November 7th as my drop dead date. Okay. And that gives you, everybody at your end, a bit of time to actually get the bits together and, and polish it up. But we're going to be working on this for years and years yet to come, clearly. And with uh, Red Storm, we did something like 14 follow up releases. And I expect this will be very similar to. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't go on holiday after release. <laughs> Yeah, that's when the work really starts. <laughs> I have such a good team, it doesn't matter. You know, I could get hit by a bus and everything would be just fine. All right. Well, Rob, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited. I have to say that, uh, you know, Flashpoint campaigns released, I think it was around the same time as Command, right? You know, we were not... A month before. Yeah, a month October before. October 2013. And, and these two games, you know, are like almost... They, they went off into completely different directions, but in the end, they're sort of uniting under the umbrella of the pro work, under the umbrella of, you know, evolution in, you know, how the franchise went. It's and so more on. true than you realize, I think, because on the pro side, DSTL have actually linked Flashpoint campaigns and, com and Command together. So you can play in Command and see the Flashpoint campaign battlefield inside Command. They've created overlays and, and ways of integrating the two games together. So it, it is really interesting so, what's going on. So you're, uh, you're, uh, you're, it, it's exciting, really exciting to see that these two games are, you know, after nine years, are, you know, are, are, are still a, a big thing, a big part of the Wargaming community. So, uh, you know, thanks for sharing all this with us. Okay. Yes, uh, Command and Demetrius, uh, I've met Demetrius several times now, and we got along like a house on fire. Yeah, Command pulled ahead. They got more updates out <laughs> than we did, but we're going to pick up our uh, uh, socks now. We're going to get the cadence going a little faster. That, I think you're, you're, you know, it's, it's a different type of game. Of course, Command is modern, and, and you know, start as, starting as Cold War, you've got to sort of, you've got, you've got more room for the future, right? You know, there's, there's, there's a lot yes. of content that can come. You know, there's nuclear weapons, there's chemical weapons, there's, there's drones. There's so much to look forward to, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. We're more excited than we've ever been, and I've been working on this for like 20 years now, <laughs> if you go right back to the very beginning.
Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great, Rob. Thank you for joining us. And uh, uh, well, uh, we'll see you for, uh, for live stream. We have actually started live streaming uh, Flashpoint campaign Southern Storm this week. So uh, get on the Twitch schedule. Uh, we'll be uh, happy to share um, the dates for the next live streams. Uh, I think someone from the team actually streamed uh, stream or is going to stream Flashpoint campaigns uh, in the coming days. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's all real now. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thank you.